In our world, there is so much sorrow, misery, and sadness. We see indicators all around us that reveal to us that most people are looking for something, anything, that can bring them true joy. In this study on joy, Scott Pauley will take us to God's Word and help us discover the source of true, lasting joy. And as we study the Bible together, we will find that God's joy is readily available to us through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian people ought to be the happiest people on earth. That doesn't mean they're perfect. It doesn't mean their life is perfect. It doesn't mean they don't have problems. It doesn't mean they don't have bad days and sad days. It means this, that if you truly know your sins have been forgiven, Christ is your Savior, the Holy Spirit is your guide, God is your Father, your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven, and you have everlasting life, you always, are you listening to me? You always have something to rejoice in. That's why when those disciples came back rejoicing that the demons were subject to them, Jesus said, in this rejoice not, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And today we come to, I think, the the great theme that is found all through the Old and the New Testament, and it is the joy of salvation. In our last study, we talked about the joy of being right with God, even as a Christian. Every day, that's the joy of fellowship. But all that begins with the joy of relationship. Uh, you enter into that initially at the moment of your salvation. Uh, let's begin today in Psalm 51. I'm going to give you four different passages today, but like beautiful pearls on a strand or, or diamonds on a strand, they all connect to this theme of the joy of salvation. Psalm 51, interestingly enough, is the parallel psalm uh, to Psalm 32 that we were in in our last study. And in Psalm 51 and verse number 12, we read these words, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me, with thy free spirit. Here's a man who is wounded because of his sin. He's weak and weary with the chastening of God. He's confessing his sin, and he wants to be right again. In fact, back in verse 8, he says, Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. You see, one of the first marks that a person is not right with God is the joy of the Lord is gone. I, I believe this. I think the greatest chastening God gives initially is what he removes. It's not something that happens to you. It is what you begin to lose. And that is you begin to lose the near consciousness of his presence, the, the peace of God in your heart. The joy is gone. Are you there? And so this is interesting. He, he connects the joy of the Lord's salvation with the upholding. Remember, the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. So here's the first thing we recognize about the joy of salvation. It is divine joy. It's not human in nature. It is divine. It's rooted in him, and it's only available when you are right with him. Now, some people have the idea that you can lose your salvation. But notice carefully, he's not asking for the Lord to restore the salvation. He's asking for the Lord to restore the joy of his salvation. This, this is a saved man He's known the joy of that salvation. He's lost the joy of that salvation because of sin, and now he's getting right with God, and he wants to know the joy again. Do you remember when you first got saved? Do you remember the joy? I do. I remember the day I came to faith in Christ as a boy. I still remember seeing my mother after I got saved that day and saying to her, Mama, I got saved today. Oh, it meant something to me. It means even more to me today. But I must tell you, through the years, there have been moments when, uh, though I was a saved person and belonged to the Lord, the joy was gone, and it is miserable. So we must recognize that the joy is divine in its nature. And then we come to a second scripture, same emphasis. It's found in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 12 and verse number 3. Listen to it carefully. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. 
I love that expression. What imagery is here? A well, a well with no bottom, a well that is perennially fresh, a well you can always draw from. The joy of salvation is not only divine joy, it is endless joy. You can go back to that well over and over and over again. You should frequent Calvary. You should visit the cross often. You should go in the memory bank of your spiritual memory to the moment when you came to faith in Christ and rejoice that you've come into a right relationship with him and with joy draw water out of the wells of salvation. The previous verse, the Lord says uh, that he is our strength and our song and has become our salvation. God is my salvation. And so I can always rejoice in him. I got to tell you, I don't always rejoice in me. In fact, sometimes I get pretty frustrated with me. And I can't always rejoice in people, and I can't always rejoice in good circumstances, but I can always rejoice in God because the joy of his salvation is divine and it is endless. And then a third scripture that has this same theme is found in Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse number 18. Interestingly enough, it's at a, a time when the nation's in trouble and even the prophet Habakkuk is kind of living at low ebb. He's discouraged. But listen to verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Do you hear the yet? Sometimes you got to live in the yet. The joy of salvation is not only divine and endless, it is overcoming joy. Maybe things are not going well right now. That's what Habakkuk described in Habakkuk chapter 3. All the food is gone. All the crops are gone. All the animals have died. Uh, there's nothing to eat. That's pretty bad, I would say. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Friend, if you can say you're saved today, you can still rejoice. Because the worst thing that can happen to you is you die and go straight into the presence of God forever. What a glorious thing it is to be saved. Maybe you're listening to me right now and you don't have this joy. Maybe, maybe you've never been saved. Let's start there. If you've never been saved, you've got to start by trusting Christ and Christ alone for your soul's salvation. And if you have been saved, and like many of the Lord's people, you have drifted from the Lord and let other things come between you and God I come back to him. You, you can be restored to fellowship with God, and you can have the joy of that salvation restored. One more. This one comes from the New Testament book of Romans chapter 5. Let me read verse 10 and verse number 11. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we should be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Now, this joy of salvation is divine joy and endless joy and overcoming joy, but it is spiritual joy. Notice it's not contingent on circumstances. I hope you have a good day today. I hope you have good favor and a good, good work day and business and all of that. But our joy is we're rejoicing in what Christ has done to save us and what we now have in Jesus Christ. Here's the joy of oneness with God, atonement, the joy of being right, the joy of being reconciled, the joy of being in a relationship, the joy of having received salvation. Rejoice that your name is written down in heaven. My prayer to you today is that you will know the joy of his salvation and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Oh, that we would share Christ with our sad, searching world. We encourage you to visit our YouTube channel and search for How to Enjoy the Journey. This five-minute video is a great way to share the gospel of Christ with your family and friends and also on your social media platforms. We also have a wide variety of resources that will equip you to share your faith, from free articles and blogs to our store where you can order personalized Enjoying the Journey gospel brochures in both English and Spanish. May the joy of Jesus overflow in our own life and into the lives of those around us.